Awesome, so I'm gonna log in. If you don't have an account, you can create it, it's free. Uh, we only use GitHub uh, so that you don't spam us, uh, but it's free to use. And so the way in which it's gonna work is the following. We're gonna go on our repo. So you just forge in it, uh, a demo invariance. I have like uh, millions of things of work that I'm doing. So let's see, we're gonna go to our demo invariant uh, uh, setup. Uh, we can delete uh, the lib, no, we need the lib, we'll delete the script, uh, we'll set up our SRC. So let's say we're going to set this up to be a uint64 instead of 56. And maybe we wanna just verify that it doesn't overflow. So at this point we'll have uh, forge, uh, so feed uh, uh, functionality. Let's also delete uh, the test file because we don't need it. And so this is a basic foundry repo. I'm gonna go on my own GitHub so that I can make it open source. Uh, recon demo free public it needs to be public otherwise you need to get pro for the private repos you click this to get uh, the remote installation stuff gonna set up git it's gonna push to github so now we have our code on github we grab the url up here we go on public repos we paste it and notice that this is a root forge repo so if you drop a sherlock one this is not going to work because sherlock has a bunch of other stuff but if you just copy your uh, sherlock thingy and you set it up this way it's going to work so again i just paste here start the job here is going to tell you what's going on because it's super fast it took like uh, three seconds so hopefully that's because it was done and not because something crashed <laughs> let's cross our fingers refresh there we go, recon demo free. And so at this point I have my contract here. I have the two functions. Uh, if I need the variable to track it, I can track it by adding it here. And now I have the entire setup. So now I can download my files. I'm gonna open this folder like so. Open the files in the downloads. I'm going to, let's see test folder, drag the test folder here, copy folder, and then rename it to recon, drop it in the test folder. I'm going to drag out the Medusa file. And the last thing I have to do is install the dependencies here via this command dash dash no commit so that it doesn't complain and remember to add the remappings on the foundry folder which is on foundry.toml boom foundry so then i can forge build the fact that he's saying that he's installing this version is weird maybe we're missing something so so c version 0.8.14 what is it like so? Compiling on 0.8.14, we have all of our files set up. In a normal setup, you would have to check your constructor, but our constructor is empty. And so the last thing we will do, as uh, we have our target functions here, will be to verify that the counter never overflows and so one way i mean this is checked math so we know it's gonna revert so one way for us to verify it will be to check that on increment we do a try catch and then we assert false here we can also do t false uh, we have reverted due to overflow we could also check for the specific error by the way uh, but that's basically gonna be it we run the fuzzer, we have Medusa fuzz. 
blah, blah, blah. Critic tester was not specified in the target contracts. So this is basically the issue that we mentioned before. What, what was it? Uh, compile foundry dash compile all. So there we go, Medusa broke the property in literally an instant. It set the number to uint64 minus one, and then it just called the increment and it was able to uh, cause a panic and an arithmetic overflow. You could enhance this by having a specific check, but at the end of the day, this shows you how to get started from zero to hero. And uh, what the, the main advantage of having the setup that we have with uh, uh, recon from uh, Antonio's uh, brilliant work is that I'm going to show you how you debug a broken property in production, uh, which is by using the foundry setup. So we broke the property. We have, you see this set of sequences. You go here, you copy them, you go on critic to foundry. And then on the test, you just dro drop this, this stuff right here, all, all of the function calls. And then you remove the extra uh, uh, text and the extra text here is just the block and gas etc since we don't care about time we can just get rid of all of this and so by doing this now we can run the uh, broken sequence in foundry so that you can quickly debug it like so and so by using this setup, not only you, you, it takes less time to um, get started, but it also will take less time to iterate and debug because let's say we change this to, you know, you uint uh, 128, again, just an example, uh, and we see, but perhaps we even keep the set number to that. Well, now it's not gonna... Uh, uh, you have to change this uh, variable here that we didn't use, but we did track. But at the end of the day, now we're gonna have the property that is no longer broken. And so this is how you would iterate. Obviously, if you run it again, Medusa will find another case in which it breaks it. But now you have a workflow that allows you to use invariants as part of your day-to-day. -day. So hopefully that shows you why this can be very powerful because obviously, this is an example, but if you had like a year six for six to six volt or a different setup, then now you would actually be able to uh, do a lot of stuff. And obviously here it needs to call set increment two to the 64 times. So it's going to take a while, but eventually we'll still find a broken uh, property because it's going to eventually spam that call until it actually gets it. And it's doing, you know, 36,000 calls per second. So it's going to take some time but it will eventually find the bug so hopefully that